Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Stratney Wester is the story written by H. K. Munro, who was born in 1870 and died in 1916. Is he was called Saki because uh, Saki was his pen name. He was a British writer who was born in Burma when British imperialism was at its height. He used to write witty, mischievous, and macabre stories. Macabre stories uh, used to have death as the main subject, and such kinds of stories are strange, upsetting, and disturbing. And uh, in his works, literary works, and in his stories, we see that uh, mostly we see, notice the theme of imperialism, where he satirizes Edwardian society and culture. And uh, in his works, uh, the the children are most of the time they are the main characters that we could see in his works, and uh, maybe that is being influenced by his own childhood, by his own difficult childhood. and uh, there is a great influence of his uh, own life upon his work and his childhood experiences because he had a difficult childhood he was uh, his mother died when he was only 2 year old and he spent his childhood in a religious household with a uh, with his grandmother and two of his aunts who were very strict and uh, that we could see in his works too where the children are suffering and uh, we could also notice the uncaring adults uh, in the works that he write and um, his unhappy childhood made him to pick children and their sufferings as one of the great strengths of his writing as one of the great features of his writing in the present story stradney wester there are two main characters conradin who was a 10 year old boy he is the main character of the story and uh, he was declared invalid by the doctors who uh, diagnosed and who told that he was left only 5 years to live and he was disliked by his guardian who was also uh, his cousin mrs dero and uh, he was leading a very unhappy life and uh, he was a unhappy fellow who did not uh, who had a quite difficult life where he was forbidden so many things that he pleased to do and uh, he, this was his cousin who deprived him of the little pleasures of life therefore he seeks escape into an imaginary world and uh, what was that imaginary world that was a tool shed where he kept two pets whom he gave religious symbols and uh, he represents the colonized conradin he represents the because theme of imperialism is also very much important in the present story and in the most of the works of uh, saki and uh, in the present story this was conradin who represents colonized and mrs drop represents colonizer and who he was colonized who was denied of any kind of freedom by his colonizer in this case he was mrs drop so the broader theme of colonization uh, could be seen in this specific setting too in the form of these two characters of conradin and mrs drop now we would have a look at the character of mrs drop who was uh, conradin's guardian and cousin and uh, she used to hate conradin she controls his life as much as she can and she was depicted as selfish lady uh, as she does not try to find to every this we could see in her, her response to the doctors uh, diagnosed when he told that he was not uh, left more years to live and instead of she readily accepted that instead of questioning it and she did not try to find any cure for conradin or some other treatment for him but she readily accepted doctors diagnosis without questioning it this showed that how much she hated him and she wanted to rid of him get rid of him and uh, she represents imperialism a colonial rule the pervasive themes of the stories include the theme of religion and uh, this could be seen uh, uh, in uh, the uh, through the character of mrs dero when she used to visit the church and what kind of attitude does she have towards religion and this could also be seen through uh, conradin's attitude towards religion he kept two pets and he also gave uh, those pets the religious symbols the hen was called an a baptist and whereas the ferret was called stradney wester a god 
so the role of god is assigned to a violent caged animal this was the attitude of the boy towards religion and this could be seen now uh, we could also see the author's attitude towards religion through this boy's attitude too because uh, most of the time the autobiographical implications are or could be noticed in Saki's works and in the present work too. Then there is the theme of escape as he, the boy wanted to escape this miserable world and his escape was uh, he used to escape the miserable world therefore he used to visit the tool shed and uh, he used to imagine these two animals as the best friends and he used to share things with them because he did not have any company any other company any other friend and uh, the theme of revenge evil selfishness that is also prevalent in the story and uh, the story also explores the capacity for evil that the human beings have and the theme of independence or freedom is also very much important in the story where the boy desires for the independence and the freedom which he is able to get at the very end when he got rid of mrs drop and now he was free to live the life of his own choice now we are going to have a look at the textual quotes and these textual quotes are important these um, yeah, textual quotes would also be helpful whenever you would be uh, attempting any question either of the characters or uh, you would be writing about some characters you would be writing about some themes you may take these uh, textual quotes and uh, add them in your question in order to support your ideas your viewpoints so firstly we'll have a look at uh, the quotes that uh, describe the character of mrs d Rob or what kind of opinions uh, uh, do does conradon have mrs about mrs d Rob. So the story starts with these lines when this is told that Conrad was 10 year old and the doctor had pronounced his professional opinion that the boy would not live another 5 years and this opinion was endorsed by Mrs. D. Rob. To Conrad, uh, Mrs. D. Rob represents cruelty, selfishness and imperialism and this could be seen through these lines. Uh, Mrs. D. Rob was Conrad's cousin and guardian and in his eyes, his eyes means Conrad's eyes, she represented those three-fifths of the world that are necessary and disagreeable and real. So these are the lines directly taken, these highlighted lines, with the lines highlighted in yellow, these are directly taken from the story and written down over here and these tell us about the, what, what does the boy think about Mrs. D. Rob. Uh, next we see that Conradin was facing illness, dullness and constraints. Only, this is only his... Uh, these are only his imaginations which kept him alive and those imaginations are the source of his survival and if we have this opinion we are going to support this opinion by these lines uh, that we have taken from the story. Conradin supposed he would succumb to the mastering pressure of various necessary things such as illness and dryness. Without his imagination which was rampant under the spur of loneliness he would have succumbed long ago. So this text supports the opinion our opinion that he had a miserable childhood and he was facing illness dullness and constraints and this is only his imagination which kept him alive next the theme of evil so we see that they both both mrs T both conradon and mrs d rob they both hated each other but they had concealed their hatred for each other Mrs. So these are the lines we taken from the story. Mrs. D. Rob would never, in her honestest moments, have confessed to herself that she disliked Conradin. And uh, though she might have been deeply aware that it was a duty that she Conradin hated her with a desperate sincerity, which he was perfectly able to mask. So that's important. You could also add only these two lines when you would like to, if you would like to write about uh, their hatred and how did they conceal their hatred for each other you may only write these two lines and this would do these are important then the theme of uh, lack of freedom theme of control constraints uh, this could be these could be seen through the lines given below uh, see we see in the first line the in the dull cheerless garden overlooked by so many windows that were ready to open with the message not to do this or that or a reminder that medicines were due, he found little attraction. So all the time he was on call, he could not uh, enjoy uh, 
uh, any moment in the garden uh, all the time he was at the disposal of mrs rirop who would not let him to take a fresh breath even so we also see that nature was also against him and um, this also refers that the little players were out of his reach and this could be seen through this line this is important the few fruit trees that it contained were set jealously apart from his blocking so the nature was also set against him this was not only mrs dirop and um, what did he do he kept two animals in a tool shed uh, were the only company the only friends and he sneakily used to visit the shed and because uh, he was afraid that mrs g rop would notice this thing therefore he stealthily used to visit the shed and uh, these are the text uh, these are the lines taken from the story uh, there was a disused tool shed of respectable proportion and within its walls conrad and found a haven haven means uh, some refuge shelter so that was his refuge that was his shelter where he used to visit uh, the two pets who were his, you know, his friends and he used to share things with them he used to enjoy those moments uh, the something they took on wearing aspects of a playroom and a cathedral so that has a religious significance too where he used to call that a cathedral and uh, in one corner lived a ragged plumaged hodden hen and uh, then there was the uh, in the uh, at the other end there was the abode of a large poly cat ferret which was a who uh, okay some friend brought uh, this for conradin and conradin was dreadfully afraid of the leech sharp fanged beast but it was his most treasured passion so you may call sredni vester the his most treasured passion he spun the beast a wonderful name and from that moment it grew into a god and a religion and what name did he give the beast the sredni vester so the next we could also notice the theme of religion and uh, there we could also see that there was a contradiction in their sense of religion there here means mrs dirop and conradin their sense of religion was changed for conradin his god was in the tool shed the sredni the sredni vester and he also used to make offerings at his shrine uh, whereas woman indulge in religion once a week at a church and he used she used to take conradin with her uh, but to conradin the church service was an alien right in the house of raymond so what does uh, conradin do every thursday he used to visit church uh, every week and every thursday in the dim and musty silence of the tool shed he worshiped with mystic and elaborate ceremonial before the wooden hutch where dwelt sredni vester the great ferret so he considered sredni sredni vester the great ferret his god and he used to make offerings to him he used to pray to him and uh, as opposed to the woman's religion which as far as conrad could observe went to great lengths in the contrary direction so both they both have a contradictory opinions or uh, of uh, religion on one occasion when mrs d rop suffered from acute toothache for 3 days conrad and kept up the festival during the entire 3 days and almost succeeded in persuading himself that sredni vestu was personally responsible for the toothache so he, he this we could see that whenever there was some kind of a suffering that mrs d rop suffered from he used to see that this was due to his prayer to sredni vestu this was his god who made mrs d rop suffer so he actually thought that this toothache is because of the a result of his prayer to sredni vester so what uh, the hodden hand was never drawn into the cult of sredni vester rather she was considered as an anabaptist and um, we could see the religious connotations used for both of the animals we also see the kind of a self control and restraint that the boy had and um, the calm attitude and uh, here we see that this was the time when uh, mrs d rop sold the hodden hand and uh, to that the boy was very very much upset and uh, when he was upset he liked toast but uh, mrs uh, d rop all the time refrained him to eat the toast but after selling mrs uh, after selling the hodden hen she brought the toast for him but he did not try it and she exclaimed with an injured air observing that it did not touch it and he said i she said i thought you'd like toast and he said sometimes so this show that he had a self control and restraint and um, now we also see the theme of um, evil uh, exp- uh, evil and the theme of desire for freedom uh, depicted by the author in the story through these lines and here this is the boy he used to pray to sredni vester and he used to say all the time do one thing for me 
do one thing for me sredni vaster and uh, <clears throat> these that you would notice when you read a story that these are repetition of this line do one thing for me and whenever the authors uh, de- uh, repeat anything that thing is always always very much significant so you see that this line do one thing for me sredni vaster is repeated most of the time but that thing was not specified that what was that thing we could only make an uh, idea or make a guess that what was that thing that thing might be the death for uh, of mrs d rob and he was praying for the death of mrs d rob and the thing was not specified because sredni vaster was a god he must be supposed to know that what was that thing interestingly so uh, and choking back a sob as he looked at the other empty corner and what used to be there in the empty corner at the empty corner that was the hoarden hen and now she was not there because mrs d rob sold it so conradin went back to the world he so hated these lines are very important you may add these lines whenever writing about uh, some themes or the character and every night in the welcome darkness of his bedroom and every evening in the dusk of the tool shed conradin's bitter litany went up do one thing for me sredni vaster uh, next uh, these are also the lines which explore the evil desire for freedom imperialism lack of hope and conradin fervently breathed his prayer for the last time and this was a time when mrs d rob noticed that he kept on going to the tool shed though the hoarden hen was uh, sold so she uh, sneakily uh, noticed this thing and she went into the tool shed in order to see that what was there and this was the time when the boy lost all hopes and he thought he knew that the woman would come out presently with that first smiley look so well on her face and that in an hour or two the gardener would carry away his wonderful god a god no longer but a simple brown ferret in a hutch so this was a time when he was very much disturbed and he kept on praying and he knew that the woman would kill the beast but what is happening or what happened that instead of killing the beast the woman was killed by the beast and presently his eyes were rewarded out through the doorway came a long low yellow and brown beast with eyes a blink at the waning daylight and dark wet stains around the fur of jaws and throat conradin dropped on his knees with happiness with pleasure with joy he celebrated his victory such was the passing of sredni vaster so he celebrated his victory by uh, making the toast for him and enjoying the toasts conradin fished a toasting fork out of the sideboard drawer and proceeded to toast himself a piece of bread and while they debated who the um, servants they debated the matter among themselves conradin made himself another piece of toast and he celebrated his joy because at last he got rid of mrs d rob and now he was free he was independent and uh, he was free from that miserable life so hope uh, you found the story interesting and uh, these are some of the important characteristics of the story hope you would have uh, understood them and you would be able to explain them well in your paper okay